Hi, this is Rick from 4 Community, creating community spaces so you can connect with others and also with God. I was walking through the church one day on a Sunday morning and a couple came up to me and they said, your voice is wonderful. And they continued to validate me about how wonderful my singing voice was. And they encouraged me by saying that I should go and I should do a CD and I should tour. And uh, and it was, it was getting to my head. I mean, I'm like, Look, if you say so, I don't think so, but if you say so. And I was feeling pretty good about myself because I'm getting a lot of compliments. And then they called me by somebody else's name. The name of some other guy who went to the church that I thought sings a lot better than me. He actually went on to produce a few albums and they thought I was him. And in that moment, I got completely deflated. It's like, wait a minute, none of this validation was actually for me. I don't qualify for any of this validation and my ego suddenly deflated. What about you? Have you ever had a moment when someone was giving you this really deep and meaningful validation just to discover that they were confusing you for the wrong person? Maybe your sister, your brother, your friend, your coworker, who knows? If you've got a story, please pause the video to share it with whoever it is you're watching with. This video is based on my interpretation of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 5. In this text, we discover something about our pursuit of validation and the source that it comes from. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 to 5, As for me, it matters very little how I might be evaluated by you or by any human authority. I don't even trust my own judgment on this point. My conscience is clear, but that doesn't prove I'm right. It's the Lord himself who will examine me and decide. So don't make judgments about anyone ahead of time before the Lord returns, for he will bring our darkest secrets to light and will re reveal our private motives. Then God will give to each one whatever praise is due. Hey kids, and remember to watch this week's episode of Connect HQ. Gotta go. As soon as I read this short passage, I heard Paul addressing the idea of seeking validation from others. Some of the clients I see, and also myself included, can get into a rhythm of trying to seek validation from others. We may say that we become people pleasers. And I hate that phrase, people pleasers. I hate it because sometimes I become one of them and it makes me feel so icky and gross. We can spend a great deal of wasted time trying to gain the validation of others. And there's more than just one reason why we would do something like that. In this text, I see a lot about validation, the act of seeking validation, and also trying to validate other people who maybe in leadership that we follow for the purpose of validating ourselves because we're so wise because we're following this great person. Here are two things from the passage that help us to calm down a little on our pursuit of vainly trying to seek validation from other people who really don't matter and what we may be missing about the whole idea of validation that may put us on this pursuit. Here's the first thing that's popping out to me that I'd like to share with you. There are many reasons we seek validation. The text says, it matters very little how I might be evaluated by you or by any human authority. I don't even trust my own judgment on this point. My conscience is clear, but that doesn't prove that I'm right. The source of validation truly matters. I mean, I can in a general and abstract way or even a theological way validate you about how much God loves you and how you've been equipped to do wonderful things with your life and for God's kingdom, but I can't say that too concretely about you because I don't know you too deeply. And even if I really do know you really well, I can only validate you just a little because no one knows you better than you know yourself, except for God. In this text, Paul addresses our search and our need for validation. I think that everyone needs to be validated. And I think that we do have people who can genuinely validate us and we can receive it with some confidence. But I also think that we can easily stray from the kind of validation that's healthy and that happens in a reciprocal friendship kind of way to seeking validation in ways that are really unhealthy. I think we can sometimes get drawn into people-pleasing 
and grow in a habit of wanting and needing others to approve us and validate us to the point where we start doing things because we want the external validation more than we want to be confident and humble in ourselves. Earlier in 1 Corinthians, we read a lot about validation. There's a group of people who receive their validation from their allegiance to one leader or another within the church. These two groups of people pit Paul and Apollos against each other over their discussions, and they prop one of them up as awesome and angelic and powerful. Not because they really want to raise Paul or Apollos to that wonderful level, it's because they felt they needed the validation. And if they lifted these guys higher, they would be validating themselves in other people's eyes, so other people say, oh, look at you, because you're following somebody that's so great. Propping others up and flag-waving is a boost to the ego if a group of people says, you're right and I'm wrong, you're validated. You don't need to do that, nobody needs to do that. You don't need to seek validation from others to believe that you have any self-worth. You don't need to seek validation from others before you believe that you're capable of doing something wonderful with your life. You don't need to seek validation to let something go in your past, as though you have some unfinished business where you felt that you failed in a relationship, you couldn't help someone, and they were disappointed in you, and now you're trying to prove, hey, I'm capable, if you just give me another chance, I won't fail you this time. You don't need to do any of that kind of validation. The idea in this first part of the text is all about the source. Paul in this text goes as far as saying that he's no longer interested in chasing even his own validation. His point is that he's not even aware of what is completely right and completely wrong. He only knows what forgiveness is and grace is that comes from Jesus. The source of our validation truly matters because the source gives us a measure of the quality of the validation. For Paul, he doesn't feel his quality enough even to validate himself. So let's look at the source of validation. The source matters. The text says, it's the Lord who will examine me and decide. So don't make judgments about anyone ahead of time before the Lord returns, for he will bring our darkest secrets to light and will reveal our private motives. Then God will give to each one whatever praise is due. For Paul, his validation comes from Jesus. He's not interested in getting his validation from others or even himself. He only wants it from God. Okay, now that's an awesome answer. But wait a minute. I don't think that's totally going to work for everyone. I mean, for example, Paul wasn't married. Anyone who's married knows that they need and want a certain amount of validation from their spouse, you know, at least to make sure that they're on the right track and in unity together. Paul, though, doesn't have this normal kind of validation in mind. In this text, he's really targeting the hurtful game that's being played in the Corinthian church where some people were trying to be validated as being more spiritual than others. And they were doing that by showing how others were less than they were. That's just dumb. Jesus is your ultimate validation. If you have chosen to receive Jesus' invitation to believe in him, and you are now a Jesus follower, then a large part of your validation is yet to come. And it is coming. You may not receive a lot of validation for your faith right now, but you'll receive more than the validation you're seeking right now when you are experiencing eternity. So in a general way, here's some validation that belongs to all of us. God loves you. God has made you uniquely to do something in this world that brings you fulfillment and enjoyment. You don't need someone else to tell you that you're worthy of pursuing the good life that you want. You just need to make the attempt and experiment and grow. Just go for it. You don't need to prove to someone that you're capable of meeting their standard of scrutiny, unless you're your boss and you're looking for a promotion, or you're a student and you're trying to pass your program. You know, there are moments that that makes sense, but far too often, though, we seek validation from sources that are of low quality and fairly meaningless. And we're trying to tie this something in our past and make up for some kind of deficit. The validation that Jesus has in store for you in eternity is of great quality. So if you find that you fairly easily slip into people pleasing, maybe you can remember this text. God will give to each one whatever praise is due. Your validation doesn't need to come from others or yourself. Ultimately, you want your validation to come from Jesus. Okay, that's it from me to you for now. Would you please like? Would you please share? Would you please subscribe? 
Also, would you please ask for the link? We're meeting twice this Sunday, once at 10.30 a.m. and the other time at 6 p.m. If you're a guy, 6 p.m. is just for guys, so ask for the link. Come on out. For community, creating community spaces so you can connect with others and also with God. See you next time.